near the Grand Street Bridge, along the Fish and Game Basin, Curlew and Marbled Godwit come to feed along the banks. Coastal developments began in this region as far back as the late 1880s, diminishing the water flow from the mountains to the sea. Ocean tides that exchanged water within the river channel became clogged with sand and other forms of debris. Ornamental and non-native plants were introduced, spreading across the wetland. Critical habitats were filled in for developments, but all of this is about to change. Viewing the project from a slightly different perspective, it's easy to see how humans have impacted the environment, effectively building over the river mouth to the west and damming the water source to the east. But within a few years, this wetland will be transformed into a thriving urban wilderness, complete with a hiking trail for pedestrians and access for horses, a massive fish nursery and pristine nesting sites for threatened and endangered birds. Two cities, stewards for this new river park, share borders with the San Dieguito Lagoon, and a third city along the hill has a view of the river. Until recently, surveyors viewed the lay of the land with an instrument called a theodolite. However, engineering in the 21st century has gone high-tech with Global Positioning Systems, or GPS. An engineer deploys a satellite receiver and collects data on an electronic notebook. This mathematical guidance system creates information and is used by all partners on the project. The GPS assists contractors in defining sensitive habitats, controlling limits for excavation and determining correct locations for the wetland plants. Soil is collected within different areas of the project to determine its specific chemical properties, such as salinity, reseeding and plant compatibility. The new basin will consume nearly two-thirds of this land area and be open to the ocean via a connection with the San Dieguito River. The connection to the river and the open river mouth creates tidal flushing, necessary for the survival of the various plant and animal species, which call this lagoon home. Wetland restoration began by preparing disposal sites on the eastern side of Highway 5. Over one million cubic yards of earth will be moved from the west side of the highway to these disposal sites on the east. But instead of moving the earth through the streets of Del Mar, a haul road will be created underneath the highway. Decades of graffiti art adorn the highway's support beams as scrapers move in to remove the topsoil. Measurements are taken to accommodate the tallest of vehicles, assuring a safe passage under the highway. With its close proximity to the river, a special drainage barrier was constructed under the road with stones and a permeable cloth, covered with tons of earth by a dozer. When the whole road is complete, hundreds of thousands of vehicles will pass overhead daily, and heavy equipment will move dirt under Highway 5 safely and only. The new road will permit the transfer of over one million cubic yards of dirt from the west side basin to the east side disposal sites. Clearing and grubbing with dozers will be the first task, followed by mulching of trees demolition of old, removal of metal structures, and the digging of least turn nesting sites. Excavation for the crown jewel of the project, the new fish basin, will begin shortly thereafter. <laughs>